This video is brought to you by Cloudways. PHP 8.2 will be released on November 24th, 2022. And at the top level, there's nothing that's going to blow your socks off, but this is good. PHP is a point where it's stabilizing, so we shouldn't expect huge changes all the time, especially because it's a minor release. There's actually some helpful things included in this, though, including small improvements to the core of the language, some cleanup that's going to be a little painful now and maybe later. It's a point release, so don't expect it to be a painful upgrade, but there are breaking changes. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me, at Scott Keck Warren on Twitter for all kinds of great PHP content. This video is recorded still while it was in the release process, so we are using a pre-release, so things might change between now and the release. I mean, you never know. We do not recommend installing this in production yet. At my day job, we've been bitten by letting point releases go for too long in the past, so it's important you do get it installed, but don't rush into the update. I prefer to set up a branch to test against our product using automated tests, and then we fix those issues. Then, sometime after the 8.2.1 release, We'll start pushing it out to our testing environments and then production shortly after that. New features. My favorite part of the new versions are the new features. The first being the read-only classes that we're adding. Now, 8.1 added read-only properties and 8.2 adds support to make the whole class read. This is useful for immutable classes like value objects and it's almost the same as marking all the properties as read-only, but this prevents us from accidentally creating dynamic properties the next new feature, we get our disjunctive normal form types, or DNFs. Now, this is a computer science-y term that means it allows us to combine union and intersection types. These were introduced in PHP 8.0 and 8.1, respectively. DNFs must be grouped by parentheses. These will be very helpful for helper functions, where we might use them for, with multiple classes. For example, we might have to generate a hash. We need a class that implements both the has name interface and the has ID interface, or is a null. In this case, has name and has ID or null is the disjunctive normal form of our variable, constants in traits. We can now use constants inside of traits. However, we can't access the constant through the name of the trait. We can access it using self colon name or a class that uses the trait. Redacted parameters and backtraces. Another new feature is redacted parameters and backtraces. The backtrace shows us what functions have been called and with what parameters. This can be a pain when passwords, encryption keys, or AWS keys are included and sent to third parties. We can now mark specific parameters as sensitive using the pound sensitive parameter attribute. Now, if we run the same code, we can see our secret isn't shown. This is useful for anyone who works with sensitive information and needs to send the data to third parties. I personally use observability solutions and have a need to scrub the sensitive data for them, so I'm really looking forward to this. Ultimately, I do trust those people, but why take a risk? We're also now able to fetch properties of enums in constant expression. Again, I love enums. A gap in the implementation of enums in PHP prevented us from using enum values in constant expressions. We can now use the object operator or the null safe operator to access value. Null, true, and false have been added as standalone types in this version. This is helpful for adding allowed types to return value. More after this word from our sponsors. We appreciate our sponsors because they make this episode possible. Now, we all love to write code, but managing the servers that that code runs on can be a time-consuming and error-prone process. Think of how often you've seen reports of accidental AWS bills in the tens of thousands of dollars. Cloudways offers peace of mind and flexibility so you can focus on growing your business instead of dealing with server. With Cloudways, you get an optimized stack, managed servers, backups, staging environments, integrated Git, pre-configured Composer, 24-7 tech support, and a choice of five cloud providers, AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode, Google Cloud, and Vulture. Now, I'm one of those developers who has tons of ideas for side projects, but a lot of them stop at the idea phase after I realize how I would have to maintain yet another server. Cloudways takes control of all of that, so I don't have to. I just pick a project, and then I can focus on writing code. Until I come up with another side project that describes it. 
Get a discount of 20% for three months by using our code PHPARCH. That's P-H-P-A-R-C-H. Or you can go there today by going to phparch.com slash cloudbase. Thank you, Cloudbase, for making this possible. Deprecated functions and features. Now, I'm not going to cover all of the deprecated functions and features because it's not super entertaining, and instead focus on the ones that seem the most painful. Deprecate dynamic properties. I actually love this. Before 8.2, we can set properties that don't exist inside of a class. This is called a dynamic property. It's helpful in a lot of ways, except for those of us who can't spell or type very well. Dynamic properties are going to be deprecated in 8.2, so we will get a deprecation warning. Eventually, it's going to throw an exception when 9.0 comes out. I welcome this and wish we could actually throw an exception now, as I have shot myself in the foot repeatedly with this before. Deprecated UTF-8 encode and UTF-8 decode. The RFC argues that these functions have inaccurate names. It sounds like it does more, but it actually only converts between ISO 8859-1 and UTF-8. Check out the RFC for a full explanation. If you're using these, you should be switching to MB convert encoding. Deprecated dollar sign bracket string interpolation. PHP allows us to embed variables inside of strings, so they will be automatically concatenated with the string. This change deprecates using the method dollar sign curly brackets. I didn't even know this was possible until it was removed. We can still use the bracket dollar sign bracket method, which everyone seems to be using. Breaking changes. Again, I'm not going to cover all of them because it's not entertaining, and instead focus on the ones that seem the most painful. The first is that there's a return type change for the date time create from enumerable and date time enumerable create from mutable. Before 8.2, these returned the name of the class, but now they return static. This improves IDE code completion for classes extending these, but it's a potentially breaking change if you're extending these two classes. Locale insensitive STR lower and STR to upper. STR to lower and STR to upper are now no longer locale specific. The example from the RFC is that a user selecting Turkish when installing Linux would find that applications calling to upper I would obtain the dotted capital I. Is that we should be using MBSTR to lower or MBSTR to upper if we want that localized case convert. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like us to cover? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter at scottcutcwarren. We would love to hear how we can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.